What's the potential to expand the range of products that Kenya exports while making them more competitive in markets not just in Europe and the United States, but in Africa as well? That's why I started my conversation with Elizabeth Kibaki Obiero from the World Bank. In, when you look at the opportunities for Kenya when it comes to enhancing competitiveness, some of the key areas we find are around growing the export base and keeping the export base so that ultimately we have more complexity in the sort of products that are being sent out to the market as a country. And then there's also diversification of the products. And so when you pick the, the government talks about high priority value chains, there are nine of them in five sectors. It's going into detail in those areas and actually looking at how do we um, go beyond uh, sending out primary outputs to adding some level of sophistication and then expanding. We have additional farms coming in every year um, into the economy, as we've seen, but a high level of attrition. And so ensuring that as export-oriented farms come on board, they remain in and are able to leave, reach the next level of maturity. Let, let's focus on what at this point in time has become my favorite chart uh, from this part of the report. There's, there's a bar chart that you put out which essentially compared the cost of trade between our near neighbors, Ethiopia for example, and countries much, much further away like the United States. And the study basically points out that the cost of trade in some of our neighbors like Ethiopia is way higher uh, across all goods than it is with the United States, which is separated from us by quite literally about a sea and an ocean. How is that the case? What, what exactly is it that makes trade with a country that's literally right next door so expensive? I think the question you ask, Rama, is, is really central to the, the discourse we've put out there, which is as government looks at um, stepping into the door that have, they've opened by spearheading trade integration, a key element that we need to keep an eye on is the issue of high trade costs, and, and in particular, what causes our challenges, as you rightly observed, not just distance, but more than tariff measures, more the issue of um, areas such as you know, connectivity in terms of physical infrastructure, how easy is it to get goods to the, to the, the places physically? Um, and then when you look at the issues of uh, non-tariff measures, uh, moving, we talk about having a thick uh, border with some of uh, our trading partners, our main trading partners, and you find that within the continent, and yet we have um, initiatives such as AFCFTA that we can take advantage of, there are gaps that we need to seal. US is more of a traditional trading partner for Kenya in that regard. And so some of the lessons that have been learned by taking advantage of the trade integration story, the economic partnership story there, and be brought on board to deal with, you know, the high costs. You have about 100 to 200 percent uh, tariff uh, with our main partners. And, and the story isn't just one of doom and gloom because, yes, goods exports have, really become, have pretty much stagnated for a fairly long period of time, declined actually over the last decade. But service exports, that's been going up. So what is it that services exports are doing right that the, the merchandise exports are not? I think when you look at the services uh, sector, one of the things that we see um, and that is observed in the report is the fact that you have private sector really pushing forward, um, innovating and, and jumping and taking leadership in areas such as mobile banking, our fintech, our financial, uh, beyond our financial sector to the ICT sector. And, and, and the dynamic there, and, and therefore the continued narrative is continuing to provide spaces where private sector can grow, can thrive, and doing so in, in, in a manner that um, propels export orientation. I want to wrap up with the tax side of things because it's useful to have these industries scale at some point and that overall is the long-term goal here but looking at the 2024 version of the finance bill there's a there's a whole host of tax changes that might on paper make Kenya's financial firms or Kenya's tech firms a bit more uncompetitive so for example we're replacing the we're proposing rather to replace the digital services tax with a tax determined by significant economic presence there's a whole host of taxes that are going to be applied um, on fees levied on financial transactions on balance these things are going to make the country less competitive for foreign capital aren't they I think um, you raise an important question and one that we continue to encourage dialogue between government, between private sector, so that ultimately private sector is at the heart of this sort of uh, decision making and discussion. Because there's a dichotomy between ensuring um, that indeed government is able to run its business and do what is required, at the same time balancing that out with ensuring that um, a predictable, 
environment, um, one where the, the cost of doing business, not just in terms of simply taxation. I mean, one of the things that, um, for example, when you look at the Kenya economy, private sector has spoken a lot about is the ease of even being able to engage with some of these licensing regimes, let alone even taxation. And so I think there's a deeper conversation to be had on actually ensuring ease um, of, or a deeper conversation to be had on having the sweet spot between what government needs to get in order to provide the services that are required and at the same time create an enabling environment.